All right then gang, so now we have our recipes listed here and when we click on one, we go to a new page using that recipes slug in the path. So this page is being driven by the slug components over here. This thing right here, this is what we see because this file and file path matches the route we go to. But we need to generate the static pages for these routes so that when we visit one, each one shows its own data for that recipe. So if I'm on this one, it shows the recipe for Marmite potatoes. If I go to this one, it shows the recipe for the Marmite skewers, etc. Now, the way we do this in Next.js is to use the get static paths function inside this slug component. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this, then definitely check out my Next.js crash course first, where I talk about this function in detail. The link is gonna be down below, but basically this function is responsible for finding out all of the paths or routes which will use this component as its page. And then Next.js can generate a static page for each one of those paths at build time, right? So to do this, we basically need to find out the slug of every recipe we have in Contentful because they will be the paths for each of the pages generated. So the first thing we need to do is start to communicate with Contentful. Now, in order to do that, we need the Contentful client. Now we do that over here inside the index file. So I'm just gonna copy this stuff from here so we can use it inside the slug file as well. So first of all, the import statement at the top. And then also I'm gonna grab this thing right here where we use the create client function and we grab the environment variables we need to connect to it. So let me copy this dude and paste it over here. Now, this time around, I'm not pasting this inside a function. Over here, we pasted it inside get static props because in this component, in this page, this is the only place it's gonna be used inside this function. But in this component, we're gonna be using it in two separate functions and we'll see that shortly. So I don't wanna place this inside one of those functions because then it's only scoped to that function and we can't use it in both then. So I'm creating it at the top level outside of both functions, first of all. Now we need to create the get static paths function. So I'm gonna say const and then get static paths and set that equal to an async function. Then inside here, this is where we're gonna use this client to get all of the entries and find out the slug for each one so that Next.js can generate a static page for each one. We also need to export this. So we'll say export in front of it. All right then, so first of all, let's get all of the entries using this. So I'll say const response is equal to await, and then it's the client.get entries, like so. And remember, we need to pass in an object with some options, or rather just one single option here to say, what content type do we want to get? So we want to get the recipes, content underscore type, and set that equal to recipe. That is the ID of the content type that we want to get. So this gets us all of the items, all of the recipes, and it stores them inside an items property on this response right here. Now, ultimately, down here, we need to return an object, right? And inside this object, we need to return a paths property. Now, the value of this should be an array of path objects. So a lot of different objects like this. This is what Next.js will use to build our static pages for each path. So the array of objects are gonna look a little bit like this. We'll have each object have a params property, then that will also be an object. And inside here, we're gonna have a slug property. And that is gonna be the slug of each item that we get. Now it looks a little bit complex, right? But we have an array of these different path objects. So there'll be several of these, one for each recipe. And in each one of those objects, we have a params property to specify any route parameters for that path. We only have one route parameter in our paths and that is the slug. So we have a slug property in this object where we say what the slug is of each item. So this is ultimately what we want to return. Now, in order to do this, in order to generate this array, I'm gonna use the map method on the items that we get back on this response right here. So I'll say const paths is equal to response.items.map. Now inside here, we fire a function for each one 
and we get access to that individual item. Now we want to return an object for each one and then that object will be placed in an array stored in paths. So the object, remember, looks like the objects we had down here where inside this we have a params property which is also an object and we specify the slug parameter. And we can get that from item.fields.slug. All right. So now here we have that array and we can just apply it down here. So this now is going to work. Now Next.js is going to know all of the different paths it needs to generate and all of the different static pages for each path. Now, because this name and this name are the same, we can shorten this so it's just paths. And then this automatically uses this value. All right. So we have the paths property now. We also need to return one other thing, and that is a fallback property, and that is going to be set to false. Now, this basically means if we go to a path that doesn't exist in these paths right here, we'll show a 404 page instead of a fallback page. Now, we're going to talk more about this later on in detail when we implement fallback pages and incremental static regeneration. But for now, let's just set this to false, meaning if they go to a slug or a path that doesn't exist, so forward slash recipes, forward slash ABC, which doesn't exist, then we're going to show a 404 page instead of a fallback page. All right, then. So now we're returning this array of paths right here. Next knows to create a page based on this component right here for each of those paths or routes. So now we'll have a page for each recipe, but we also need to access the data for each individual page. Now, to do this, we need to use the get static props function for this component, much like we used it for this index component over here. So let me just grab this thing. I'm going to copy it and come over here and I'm going to paste it right here. Now, I'm going to get rid of all of the stuff inside of it because I don't want that. We're going to flesh this out from scratch. So again, we need to use this Contentful client right here to interact with Contentful to again, get the item, the single item this time that we need. Now, you might be thinking, well, we've already got all of the items right here. Well, yeah, but this is done at build time, right? And we make this fetch request to get the items so that we can generate the paths. This thing right here is to fetch a single item based on the page that we're on. And that item then is going to be injected as a prop right here. So we do have to make these separate fetches. So first of all, I'm going to say const response is equal to await clients and then dot get entries like so. Now inside here, again, we need to specify the content underscore type. And that is going to be a recipe. Now, this right here is going to get all of the recipe entries. And we don't want to do that. We just want to get a single one. But how do we know which one? Well, after Next.js runs this right here, it generates those different paths and pages. And for each one of those different paths, it runs this function. So it's going to run it, in our case, four different times. And each time it runs it, it passes in a context object. And on that context object, there is a params property. And that params property is going to contain the slug because it's just this object right here. So params.slug is going to give us the actual slug of that particular recipe that this is running for. And we can use that slug to limit this request to just get the item with that slug property. So instead of accepting context, I'm going to destructure the params property from that context object. And that is just going to be this object right here. So I can access the slug on this now. So to only get a single recipe based on the value of a field, we add in a second property right here. And this time it's going to be in quotes. And we want to say fields dot slug or whatever field we want to match. Now we want to match to the slug and it's going to be params.slug. So this is how we can kind of limit what we get back from Contentful. We can say we want the slug or any other field to match this value. Now, if multiple entries match that value, it's going to retrieve all of those. But we know that the slug field is unique, so it's only going to get one. Now, this still returns an array. So response to items is going to be an array. And in fact, we can just destructure items from the response right here if you want to that's fine as well 
So it's going to be an array even though there's only one item inside it because it doesn't know at this point there's only going to be one item, it might be several. So it always returns an array, so we have to remember that. Now, down here we need to return an object so we can inject the props into the component. So props is going to be an object where we have a recipe prop that we want to inject and that is going to be items but we just want the item inside that, the first item. So zero. And that means we're not passing in an array as a prop into this now, we're just passing in a single item object, the first item inside this array. Okay. So now we could destructure that from the props right here, recipe, like so. And all I'm going to do for now is log that recipe to the console, like so. Save it and refresh over here. So you can see we're on veggie marmite skewers. If I inspect right now and go to the console, we see we have this single object, this single recipe, and we can see it is the veggie marmite skewers. If I go home, I'm going to clear this and then choose a different one like cheesy marmite toast. So let's go there, open this up, and we can see now we have the cheesy marmite toast. So now we have that inside our component. We can go ahead and output the data from this recipe inside the template, and we're going to do that next.